point is that this dinner is taking place in this very room. It's the first time I ever heard of a limited organization called Limud. It was 12 years ago in February, in this very ballroom, that a British guy named Uri told me there was a fabulous experience called Limud. He could not accurately describe it to me, but he became very animated as his eyes lit up as he was attempting to explain just what this thing called Limud was. And for those of you who know Uri, he doesn't excite easily. And so, for the rest of that year, all I heard about was this awesome voluntary experience. And so I decided that I had to see what this was like for myself. And what was so special about this place and this experience. So I bought a plane ticket and flew to the UK and my life was changed forever. After so many years of yeshiva study in both America and Israel, I finally found a place where Jews of all stripes get together for one purpose, and that one purpose is just to learn. It mattered not where you came from, what your political beliefs were, what your religious denomination was, what your affiliation was, or what your level of study or background was. It was the most utopian society of Jewish learning that I had ever encountered then or since. With no titles on name badges, Yes, Rabbi Norman Lamb was just Norman when we were there. And with numerous class options from one hour to the next, one can be sitting and learning with someone in Chavruta one hour, and then being that person's student that very same uh, next hour in that same person's class. Whether it's text study in a class of Talmud, or a Parshat HaShavua class, or a movie about the Holocaust, or a music class to learn Jewish music, or Jewish history, or Israel, it seemed like there was something there for everyone. It was then that I knew that the Brits were really onto something. Now, although I later found out that they actually modeled the Limud Conference after an American conference called CAGE for Jewish educators, nonetheless, I was still very impressed. So it was at that very same conference about 11 years ago, I thought, um, and my ears perked up because I heard an American accent amongst all that proper British. And that's when I met Karen Redkowski and Abby Dauber. And after having a quick chat, we decided to go watch a Chavruta study class with Rabbi Norman Lamb and Rabbi Nathan Lopez Cardozo. The room was overflowing. There was over four to 500 people in that class who had never witnessed two rabbis studying in Chavruta before. And then there were some people like myself who had experienced it on a daily basis as I studied at Yeshivat Kotel. And yet for both of us, or for all of us, it was a surreal experience to peek into and watch two great Torah scholars engaged in the finer points of a page in the Talmud. After that class, as we went to the Limud Cafe to debrief what we had just witnessed, which is what Limudniks do at the Limud Cafe, of course, we decided to play Jewish geography. And finally, Karen mentioned to me that she was just in the startup stages of beginning just such a conference in that she wanted to take it to New York and that we would have this utopian society of Jewish learning. And would I be interested in joining with them? And if so, I should come to a meeting that was being held to discuss the logistics of how to adopt this British model to New York City. It is at that meeting where I also met Jeffrey Schwartz, Marco Phyllis, and that meeting was led by Nigel. It was then that I knew I needed to join in with this committed, dedicated group of amazing people who were going to create this unique experience which had not yet made it over the Atlantic. By that time, after our little Jewish geography, Karen had realized that I was affiliated with a family catering business called Kate Caterers. And in fact, it's true, I had provided her with kosher food on a UJ mission to Prague. She immediately asked me if I could provide better food than the food we were served in the UK. Duh. Not a difficult task, I could tell you. And it seemed like a win-win situation for me to join in with these exciting people and this innovative group. And so that is how my Limit experience was born. This past week, we read in the Parsha of Shlach, which details the stories of the Israelites requesting to send spies into the land of Israel on a reconnaissance mission to see whether the land was in fact habitable and whether the people were conquerable. The question is asked by many commentaries, including Rashi, why? Why? Why did the Israelites and Moshe need to send those spies? 
If God had told them that the land was flowing with milk and honey, and that he would assist them in conquering the people in the land, and if their belief in God was strong, they should not have had any need for these spies. They should have trusted and believed in God. However, I think I believe God knows that a person sometimes has a need to actually want to learn and discover something for themselves. Do their own due diligence and not only rely on blind faith. So God, in his infinite wisdom, left it up to Moshe to decide whether to acquiesce to the people's request for spies. And Moshe gave his permission, thinking that once he did so, these people, now nah, they're not going to be interested in the spies, they'll just drop it. However, they did not drop their request, as we all know. We as an inquisitive people, all we want to learn for ourselves. We want to find answers to questions through research, through study, through learning, through limud, to get at the truth. Although it is true that in this instance the Miraglim the spies sinned by trying to convince the people that even with God's assistance this land could not be conquered over the strong objections of Kalev and Yeshua. However, the concept of learning from oneself and not just relying on any individual who says, because I told you so, it is so, is a very Jewish trait. We are called the people of the book because we learn to grow as a people by our own study of Torah and all texts. Limud provides that forum where we can all learn and discover for ourselves and allow us as Jews to take one step further on our Jewish journey wherever you are on that path or on that journey. However, that process cannot happen by itself or on one's own. One can sit and learn in your own apartment, in your own study hall by yourself, but without the support and learning with others and the support of friends and family, it will be difficult to grow. One grows when one learns as a group or with a chavruta together. And that segues me to the thank you portions of my remarks. Please bear with me as I would like to thank quite a number of people who deserve their thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank my Limud New York family. To my co-honoree, Lisa. You were my first team leader, the very first participant care chair, remember? And as I watched that you lead us that very first year, you taught me so much. Thank you. Nigel, Chazon and Isabella Friedman are really lucky to have Lisa. And please, please, don't forget my Hamantashen this coming Purim, okay? To my other co-honorees, Corinne and Michael. Corinne, you have taught me that patience is a virtue. And I thank you for always asking how I'm doing and for always to be willing to lend your ear and to be a sounding board. Michael, you have taught me to stand up for my convictions and your legal advice to this organization in our times of need and trouble was absolutely invaluable. We will all miss you. New York's loss is Los Angeles's gain. To Karen Rakowski, none of us would even be here tonight if it was not for your steely determination and your firm belief that if one sets one's mind to do something, one can accomplish it. Thank you for being my friend as we both experienced some British withdrawal. And thank you for producing the first Limud New York online auction. It was a huge success. <laughs> to Sibi and Nahum, thanks for your leadership of this organization, and especially during some of the most difficult and trying times in our history. If not for Sibi's nerves of steel and huge generosity, and Nahum's keen negotiating skills, we also might not be here tonight. To Sissy and Katie, thank you for chairing this dinner. To Penny, Marla, Rebecca, and Saul for all the hard work that you've put into this dinner, thank you. And especially to Jen, who helped me during this entire, what I would consider a difficult process, thank you. David, David Walken. For your tireless efforts on behalf of Limud New York, which are quite well evident by the numbers of people that are here, and your constant nagging me to get me to do what you want, not happy, but thank you. 
Thank you for all that you do for the Mood New York. To Mark and Kater's family. Thank you for your delicious food and your support of Limud as a partner for our entire lifespan. And on a personal note, thank you for being in my life for the last 45 years. Not many people my age can say that they are still friends with the people that they knew at their bar mitzvah or their year in high school. And yet I am so blessed to say that I have an entire table sitting right there of just such people who are here. I thank you for your friendship and for your support. <laughs> to my Shabbat dinner buddies and my fellow Eshelites in the back, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. To my Lincoln Square synagogue community, represented here by Rabbi Shaul Robinson and prior by Rabbi Community Scholar Ilana Stein Hain, both great teachers, and I've learned from you both. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to support Limud. <laughs> to my Vamoose Bus family, thank you so much for your support, and especially for your willingness to stretch your beliefs just a little bit as an accommodation on my behalf. That is very Limudi of you. <laughs> We are not only work colleagues, but I have the honor of calling you my friends as well. Thank you, Sam and Florence, for being here. Thank you. <laughs> to my close friend and business partner of 25 years, Carol Anderson. Thank you so much for being here every step of the way. And like you said, I could not have done it without you. And to all my friends at this table, thank you so much for being here. Most of you might say that the people seated with my parents are their contemporaries and their friends. And they're only here today to support them, and you would be so wrong. How lucky for me that although through, I have met these people through my parents, they have allowed me to establish my own friendship, and separate and apart from my parents. And for that, and for your support, and for your friendship, I thank you for being here. And finally, as Michael had said earlier, I'll stick with the acharon, acharon, chaviv, maybe being incorrect. If you all watched during the scrolling online journal on the big screen, you would have noticed the support that I received from over 60 family members, most who live in Israel. Here representing that large clan is my cousin Jeff Kubietsky, all the way from Renan. Jeffrey is no stranger to Limud. He is a Limudnik, as Jeffrey was the past chair of Limud LA, prior to making Aliyah to Ranana. Thank you, Jeffrey, for coming. And please send my love to everyone in Israel when you go back. I also want to give a quick shout out to my friend Eli Hamnik, who also came from all the way from Jerusalem to come here. Thank you, Eli. And to my sister and brother in law, Denise and Alan. Thank you for always being here. It's much appreciated. I know I don't always say so, but I'm saying so now in public. Thank you. Danielle's not here, but to Danielle Dovey and Zach, she was here, she had to leave. Um, thanks for coming to this boring dinner to support your uncle, I appreciate it. I do love you guys very much. The Torah states, Kabed et avi chavet imecha. Kaman yarifun yamecha al adama. And one should honor one's father and mother as God has instructed you, so that you may live long in the land that God has given you. How lucky am I to be able to fulfill this mitzvah here tonight by being able to publicly thank my parents. Without their love and support, I could not possibly be standing here tonight. Their unconditional love and support should serve as an example for every potential parent and parent in this room. Mom, you have always allowed me a lot of latitude to be whoever I wanted to be, even if at first you would have wished that I was somebody else. And Dad, your love for learning was something Denise and I witnessed from a very early age. 
you were learning Taf Yomi before the masses had ever even heard about it, and before it was popular. The fact that the Lubrina Rav, Rav Meir Shapiro, who initiated the Daf Yomi, and who was our, my grandmother and your mother's relative, had nothing to do with it. The reality and the thirst for learning comes from your father, Rav Yaakov Tzvi Kupietzky's Kron who had studied with the Chavetz Chaim in Radun, and had later learned with Rav Kook after making Aliyah to Israel in 1919. I believe, as I drop this piece of paper, I believe that Zadie would have been considered a right-winger in this group of people, and certainly by today's standards. However, I believe that Zadie is looking down on this gathering tonight, and he would totally approve of all the love of Jewish learning in this room, and the concept of Limud New York in general. Thank you all for your support, and I'd love to see all of you at the next Limud New York conference. Thank you so much.